this week you were seen wearing a t-shirt that said Shannon sucks only you had it slashed through and it said Shannon rules I think which what do people find objectionable I can see people hating Riesling I certainly Sauvignon Blanc but somehow Chenin Blanc <laughs> how could you not love Chenin Blanc? Uh, so it was okay so it was a friend of mine and it was a provocation Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, but he loves he loves white wine. Uh, he loves white wine. He has been quite disappointing for a while with Chenin because uh, he couldn't find Chenin the same level of wrestling of Chardonnay. Uh, and you know we are already talking about that, and he and he's like starting to understand <laughs> that there is great Chenin Blanc. Chenin for a while uh, was uh, picked later for question of the skin, but also because for a while people were looking for sweetness uh, because sweetness and sweet wine were looked after above for. Um, nutritional value and for money because he was selling that a bit more so you get all this context and it was quite difficult in fact to do dry Chenin just because they do not they were not look for they didn't look for that style and they didn't have the uh, technical ability to do so mm -hmm. so dry Chenin is something quite recent and of course if you put that to the spectrum of Chardonnay and Riesling made the same way in the same region for so long Chenin is learning how to make itself over the last 50 years, which is, which is almost nothing. Chenin Blanc tends to be a, a, a thick skin grape variety. Uh, that means that you need to get it ripe. To get it ripe, you need to, to get the best soil um, and the best exposure. You need to wait. It's a pretty late harvest grape. Um, so there is something happening with the Chenin, especially in the Loire. For a while, it's like when you wait and you have this condition of um, Agrometi rivers, sun, wind, you tend to have botrytis. Mm -hmm. So for a long time, Chenin was also associated with botrytis. It's not the most um, aromatic grape variety, but it's definitely a bit aromatic, and it's a very interesting phenolic grape variety. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the skin is very important in the Chenin. Mm -hmm. um, and it is one of these few white grapes, and skin is that important. Mm -hmm. Skin and phenolics balance with crazy high acid, because Chenin has acid. Mm -hmm. So when you think about that, how many grape varieties in the world of all this profile. The fact that people are working their soil, yes, it's been crucial. Um, it's been crucial because the whole uh, industry of, of, of white at that time was part between dessert wine, or wine with residual sugar, and chaptalization did a, a lot of damage. The fact that people could chaptalize uh, instead of uh, and picking and waiting led, led to have a higher crop uh, machine harvesting uh, fertilization, like Anjou, like a lot of region, it's not a very wealthy region, so chemicals were has a huge impact in terms of the economy of the region. So, for a little bit, you kind of things were hidden, like Chenin Blanc couldn't express itself just because it was not ripe, it was overly sulfur with, with added sugar. So, the fact that people came back and started to work their soil, that Nicolas Jolie did it, that then Piton did it, and Angeli did it, and Cousin did it for generations, and Joel Ménard. At Domaine des Sabronettes, which is someone that nobody talks about, but Joel really was one of the first ones to work organic and was a huge model for a lot of kids and a lot of young producers. And suddenly they could pull out taste and flavors and weight that nobody had before. So it was something really new. But you also had to go through the phase of moving from sweet, sweet wine and dessert wine, thinking about the old Joe Piton and the Richard Leroy to go back to, to dry wine. And somebody like Patrick Baudon also explained very well, like the fact that this guy had a vision of extraordinary sweet wine, handpicked with multiple trees, led them to discard the first picking, but decided to make great dry wine with that. And they got back to that work of the, of the soil and the hand picking, and that was crucial. And this is also behind the philosophy of organic, biodynamic, and natural wine. I wouldn't say everybody is unpicking or um, that machine harvesting, but there is this focus on, especially for a grape like Chenin, that we need, needs to be ripe the right way. If you, you really need to be very careful not to have this green skin taste. You really need to be careful with that. So if you over give so much, too much nitrogen, if you don't do a good cover crop, um, and if you put a lot of antibiotics, you're gonna get that. The extraordinary if we can compare slate and limestone in another one region where the mesoclimate was not that important. Because here there is just a dramatic difference between the two regions and also there is a history and I think the cellar, the fact that there is 
temperature control, natural temperature control, and uh, hygrometric control cellar in Vouvray Mont Louis Saumur, which was not the case in Anjou, made a huge difference. This incredible cellar that are dig into the ground because they are on tuff, and you can dig into the tuff. So for people who used to live in the tuff, it was called troglodytes. It was habitation for millenaries, okay? So you get these old crazy cellars where you can put your barrels, you can put your wines, they can age and preserve the acid. So you have that profile of wine, Vouvray Mont Louis Saumur. You go to Anjou, it's slate. Try to dig something in the slate in Anjou, it's super tough. So you can't dig. So the cellars were also out, they were upground. Chanel and Slate are giving extraordinary, a beautiful example. Uh, and we have to say Slate's a bit more complicated because you have Slate and, and, and Real It and Spill It and Stan It, sorry. Um, you just get wine with um, a broader structure and you get this extraordinary tannin that you barely have in on limestone. Um, so I, I really believe uh, in Chanel and Slate. So I have to admit, even today, my, my favorite Chanel are made on, 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 on slate and volcanic soil. I know Ben since uh, for nine years now. Uh, he went to the same sommelier school than I did. And instead of becoming a sommelier, he became a, he became a winemaker. He is very close to where I grew up. Um, he's in Fay d'Anjou, uh, so in the middle of the Coteau du Léon. And the wine we are tasting is called uh, uh, Guinchien, which is the name of the plot. Um, it's on a slope. Uh, where usually people make uh, dessert wine makes Coteau du Léon. So it's a slope of uh, slates and a little bit of uh, decomposed slates and a touch of, of volcanic air and there. Uh, ben works leaves inside his vineyard, so he's in the middle of the vine. Like he, he, he builds the house with his wife and kids in the middle of the vine. Uh, his farm is inside. He works everything by hand. Uh, and uh, everything is not like it's natural instrumentation, is very low intervention. Uh, Chenin, it's grown over like 200 miles roughly, starting very close to Muscadet and going uh, all the way north east to Janier. Very tiny, small appellation. And Eric Nicola uh, really helped to put Janier back on the map. So this is 2000, it's going to be a surprise. Uh, we are moving to the, to the world of uh, the, the limestone world. Um, uh, which for me gives wine with a uh, higher acid structure. Um, instead of being on the bitter citrus, you are on, on more on the, on the classic citrus like the yuzu and the mandarin and tangerine. Um, and just with the less, the, the wine are always less broad. They are just a bit more focused. Jania used to be a very, very, very famous appellation and said to be one of the best wine in the in world by Kernansky, and then it has been forgotten, um, and it's coming back. So this is a wine from Vienne. Uh, so the Vienne is a region which is always south of the Loire Valley, so it's not where you expect even to find wine. There is just pasture, and this is the first vintage of the winemaker. His name is Francois saint lô And it's still fantastic that, so Eric started to make wine in the mid-90s, in Janière, get back some, some life to Janière, then arrive, in 2007 in Anjou. And now you still have people making their first vintage in 12. It's an extraordinary dynamic region. Oh my God, this is so good. It is so good. <laughs> it's been open since I'd like to know why Chenin is so difficult to grow in other places. I would like to understand why Chenin is so complicated because it's, when you think about it, it's a pretty tough grape variety, you know, it's like, it's good yield. Uh, okay, there is some sense, it's a bit sensible to, to disease, but like every other grape, you know. There is enough clones available, so it's very strange why it's not more, more popular and not more planted. Um, yes, Workland, I think, is gonna be a place to watch, but I need to go and see. But the fact that people like Vincent Carême, who makes wine in, in Vouvray, and makes also wine in South Africa, it's a pretty big sign. Today, I believe, if I want to age some wine, I will go to the Loire. It's a region where you can buy wine for 20, $30 retail of, I say, super high top wine for $30 retail. And you can drink them and keep them. And I'm not sure there is a lot of wine region in the world that can offer that today. What's happening right now is extraordinary. That is also it's extraordinary because we, we, are, we are part of the history right now testing this wine 
being revealed to themselves, you know?